Welcome to Social Media Meltdown here on JustCoolEnough.com. I'm Joe. And I'm Kaylin. How you doing, Kaylin? How you been? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing well also. Do you I think... Like uh, very I, snazzy. Great. Oh, oh, very nice, yes. Uh, we are talking about this week... Well, what are we talking about this week, Caitlin Shelby? At Caitlin Shelby on Twitter. I mean, all the news right now is all about Facebook, so why shouldn't we talk about Facebook? Well, it's really hard to get away from Facebook when you're talking about social media. and exactly. and I mean, like, Facebook is the, the powerhouse. I, I think, like, Facebook is kind of like the place to be when you're talking about social media, and especially when you're talking about advertising, uh, lots of, especially small businesses like to utilize Facebook for for advertising because you're able to target a demographic of people that are close to you and you can kind of track and see your return on investment, but uh-huh. um, maybe it doesn't work so well for larger companies like GM. Exactly. I mean, if you're going to think in terms of online advertising and special social advertising, you're automatically just going to go straight to Facebook. I mean, there's no giant out there bigger when it comes to a social network. Mm -hmm. And, um, but yeah, and, and, and as we've seen in the news, you know, last week, GM decided Facebook advertising is not for them. Uh, and they made a very public statement. Um, and pulled out ten million dollars in advertising. No, and I mean ten million dollars means nothing to Facebook. <laughs> like they could care less that GM left. Basically, what hurts them is the fact that they have now told the world <laughs> that they don't find this as an effective form of advertising, and it's not worth their money. Okay, so that that seems like pretty harsh words, and especially the timing of it is what really kind of made me like what they they did this they did this the day before facebook's initial public offering was was on the table uh, like it was like the night before <laughs> like right before it was the next big news it was gm drops facebook or like the forbes article i loved their title which is gm it doesn't like facebook <laughs> and um so yeah, the, I, I think that they were kind of sandbagging the Facebook IPO, IPO. I think they were like, you know, like, you're just such a young, fresh company. Like, do you think they're jealous or something like that? I, I, I honestly... Doesn't it seem that way, at least? Like, maybe maybe I'm just pro- projecting, but it seems that way. Here's my other thing. I, I work in automotive, and this is going to sound really awful um, of me, and I kind of wanted to ask my manager's opinion, and then I was like, I don't really want to ask her because I feel like I should know this. Um, <laughs> does <laughs> does GM have any, like, super hip or, like, cars that are marketed as being super hip? Yeah, yeah, they have, the, like, they have Ford the... Ford has the Fiesta and... Well, and, GM has the Chevy Sonic, which is their small, like, super active car. And, mm-hmm. of course, they have the Camaro, which is, like, you know, a, a fast kind of car. But, but that goes back more to a more traditional It, it does, but the, the Chevy Sonic and the Chevy Cruze are definitely marketed towards a younger, uh, young professional demographic. Okay. Or, or maybe even something like a college student who, who's gotten their first entry-level job, that kind of stuff. The Chevy Con- Sonic and Cruze are both very much part of their marketing in fact uh i see a lot of advertising for chevy on on hulu hulu and chevy yes yeah absolutely uh at least the way the ads are tailored for me i get a lot of car ads i get a lot of ads for cell phones and in that kind of stuff and uh video game ads and things like that but um so i see a ton of chevy ads i probably see more chevy ads on hulu for the Chevy Sonic and the Chevy Cruze than than I see for any other car brand. Um, so so I I think that once you reach a critical mass, you mm-hmm. might not necessarily need to be on Facebook all the time because if something you're doing is worthwhile on the internet, it's going to be shared on Facebook. It's mm-hmm. just I mean Facebook is kind of part. It, Facebook is the internet experience for a lot of consumers, for most consumers, and what happens is. If there's something cool, like they drop a Chevy Sonic out of a C-130 airplane and they make it parachute down, which they did, and somebody says, "Whoa, that's nuts!" and they shared it on Facebook, it's going to get on Facebook regardless. Like they don't need, they don't. I, I think it almost takes away from a brand when I see like, "Do you like fixing cars? 
do what you like to do, or, or do stuff all day that you like. And then it has like a weird picture of some weird car. And then next thing down is like a a Coca Cola ad. I, I think when you put ads together from like different kind of companies and things like that, uh, maybe it does take away from it. Yeah, and and I'm on the, the Chevy Sonic page, and, and it's it's okay. It's a nice, cool looking car, by the way. I, no, I I mean their page. Yeah, I know. Just okay. So we're looking at the web page, not the car. And it's it's okay. It's not mind blowing. I've seen much better automotive Facebook pages than this one. Um, I know that that. The switch to timeline took away a lot of the really cool features, um, like the friend gating and, and the the setting of a homepage. Now it just automatically goes to your timeline. You can't decide what page it goes to, um, which kind of sucks. But at the same time, they have some cool stuff on here. But from what I can see in the last couple of posts, they're not really advertising these other pages that mm-hmm. are on their Facebook. Which, so if you know how pages work, it actually it has to be a pull marketing. You have to tell people about it so they actually come back and, and go to it. And then I'll also, say, I mean, there's the, with, with Chevy Sonic ads that I've seen, there, there's no real good call to action in it either. Mm-hmm. There, it's just it's just an ad, and maybe may, maybe are are you going down the path where you feel that maybe Chevy isn't utilizing this advertising medium as as well as they should. They have some really great programs, it looks like, in here. Um, different marketing um, kind of ploys to, to get people interested. But what people are going to see, they're not going to visit the Chevy Sonic Facebook page every day and go and look at these other tabs. They're only going to see the statuses as they show up on their, on their page. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you would have to be going in and being like, somehow drawing them with the, the, the link back to that tab to mm-hmm. get them interested. And I don't really see much of anything like that on here. Um, so I would have no idea that they have this um, try to kick flip. Um, you can kick flip a Sonic um, online. But I would have no idea just by looking at their last week. But, but of- people don't go to Facebook to do research, though. P- people go to Facebook to say... This is what I like. You know, like, if they're going to do research, they're going to go check on AutoTrader or, or Cars.com or, or MSN Autos or Yahoo Autos or something like that. You know, they're going to go find a site in the auto motor trend. They're going to do research like that. I think Facebook is more of like a, uh, a popularity meter. You know? It is. And, it, 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 and it's like a chicken or the egg. You know, like, it's like... Are you popular on Facebook or are you popular in real life? <laughs> like it's it's kind of. And I I guess my rant just a little bit ago kind of is not exactly what we're talking because we're more talking about the ads and not their actual campaigns they have going on. Um, so th- we're specifically Jam is not talking about taking away their pages as I understand it. They're getting rid of um, their actual ad space that that they have bought on the side of. Of people's um, yeah, profiles. They're still going to be using Facebook, but yes. I, I mean, I think that would be dumb to completely take your products off Facebook. But the ten million that they had towards, which is not much, by the way, no, I, I mean, in the in the big scheme of things, that's nothing um, to a giant company like Facebook and GM. It's more uh, of it, it, the it, the Wall Street Journal um, noted that GM spends forty million dollars creating content for Facebook, mm-hmm. and only ten million dollars of that goes towards the paid advertising media. Yeah. So the other thirty million dollars is for all of those pages I was just talking about. It doesn't look like they're doing thirty million dollars worth of work. It looks like they. I mean, I could do that for fifteen grand. Yeah. <laughs> like I, that's that's how much it looks like they're doing. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming it has a lot of social tie-ins back to their website and all kinds of, you know, cool graphics and interactive crap and whatever. Um, but at the same point, or at the same time, the, the attention span on Facebook isn't all that long. So well, it, it's longer than Twitter. in-depth interactive things isn't the best place to put it on. Facebook links live a decent amount of time, but mm-hmm. I don't... And, you know, they can be shared and resurrected and this and that, but... Yeah. You know, in, in the big scheme of things, Facebook links are actually pretty sticky on the internet. Mm-hmm. Um, 
there's not a good search feature though. So like if somebody's looking for a specific thing on Facebook, like you would have to go to this timeline and be like, I think it was around January that this happened. Yeah, I can't go. I want to know what like everyone I know or everyone in the world is saying about the Chevy Cruze. Well, and you know, I like think you can go to the Chevy Cruze's Facebook page and see what people are saying there. But you also have to keep in mind that if I go on the Chevy Cruze's Facebook and I go. My Chevy Cruze is crap and is the ugliest, nastiest vehicle I've ever driven in the entire world. It's probably going to get deleted. They have the right to delete that. Yeah. So you have to keep in mind there's some kind of censorship. Unlike if I went on Twitter and I want to see what everyone is saying about the Chevy Cruze, I can see that and no one can ever take it down. Yeah. So that's. But and, I and mean, this is this is something. Mention comes in. The, the, you, I, I remember you complaining a couple of weeks back like you didn't like the social search that Google was implementing. This is exactly what Google's trying to do with their with their new social searching. You know, mm -hmm. like this, they, they want to know, they, they want to put you in contact with people that have an opinion on things that you're searching. I think that's smart, but... You know, I, I guess it's not here nor there, but I, I just think it's funny that you're, you're asking for this and you're hating on it before. What? Uh, well, I just, I don't think... Is it the way it's implemented know. that you didn't like? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think my friends know very much. It's I, I would like my other people's opinions rather than my friends. Yeah, you're like, I mean, just because you're good at tasting wine doesn't mean you're great at... Exactly, like, I kind of want the full spectrum of, of what's going on um so you know i mean all my friends could be out there saying the chevy sonic is so cute <laughs> and then that's all i see when i google chevy sonic and then I, all i know about it is that it's really cute because 700 of my friends said so well <laughs> it's handsome first of all but um <laughs> the the thing is um gm you know they drive they're really kind of I, I don't know if they're getting as much traction as they could be getting from social networking just because of their campaigns right now. I mean, GM didn't even do Super, Super Bowl, Bowl ads. They completely, they dropped the Super Bowl ads last year. They're like, meh, I mean, we, we don't want to do that. Get me started on Super Bowl ads and which automotive maker should have been in the Super Bowl. <laughs> because I will tell you that the only company that deserved to have space in the Super Bowl would have been... Um, the only company that didn't take government money. So, <laughs> well, the rest of them should not have been using our taxpayer dollars by $40 million commercials. Well, you but, know what? You know how important advertising is, though? I know. I'm an advertising major. <laughs> I understand it, but at the same time, I, we give these people our money, and, and you expect them to use it responsibly, and in his 30 seconds of our lives, uh, using that much money... What if, what if it was a thank you? What if, like, thanks everyone for bailing us out. Now we're going to build you good cars. They can put a little ticker at the bottom of, like, how much every second of that commercial costs. <laughs> they only buy, like, six seconds of ads just to say thanks. Yeah, exactly. But, okay, so let's get back to these um, th these online ads. Because a word stream has actually um, published the stats on the click-through rates okay. um, of Facebook um, and Google and then what the industry average is for all um, social networking websites that do ads and before I had read this and I, I'm going to go under the assumption that you haven't read it what would you think the click-through rate is on Facebook? Oh, super low I think that the really? yeah, I I mean when I look at a, uh, Facebook uh, ads blend into the min, the what is it, minutia <laughs> the, the, like they just kind of yeah. fall away for me and I think that's why Facebook ads are just kind of Ineffective. I don't think there's a lot of click through. See, that's, that's crazy for me because um, I feel like Facebook ads are so in tune with my life. They are, but you just tune them out. Like, would you actually that's, go through it actively? I click on them almost every day. Really? And I don't fall for because being educated in advertising, I don't fall for advertising. Yeah, you're clicking on it for a reason. Like I, I, I don't click online ads because I, I know I, I could see an ad and be like hmm and then I'm gonna go and Google it because yeah. I don't click on your ad like sometimes I go around it yeah but I just find so much intriguing things on Facebook I can't help but just get so excited but I can't you see but I, I don't think that people you're you are an advertising major this is what you do and you know like I pay attention to it too but 
Like, that, the newest coach bag is on my Facebook right now. And right now, I mean, the advertising is spot on. It is exactly what my interests are. Right now, I'm getting advertisements for a Fiat 500. Totally just, cool. The website is not available when right. I clicked on the ad. But the thing is, like, I, I don't see very many people clicking these ads because they've already tuned them out. These kind of ads are, are almost like the... I mean, they're like the bird poop of the internet. They're just there. They, I mean, like, I, I can't really think of a, a better analogy. They're also really um, repetitive of the same ones over and over. Uh, it's gotten to the point that, that ModCloth, the, the vintage-inspired clothing website, shows up so much in my advertisements. And I also, grant, I buy a lot of clothes from there that I almost use it as a bookmark. Like, I'll be on Facebook, and I'm like, I'm going to go look at clothes. Click, because I can click right here, because I always know there's going to be a ModCloth ad on the side of my Facebook. See, the, I mean, I, Facebook's trying to monetize right now with with their site. I, I just don't see these ads being the best way to go about it. Now, we're starting to see some stuff in the stream now, <laughs> and I think that's a more effective use of where... Uh, of where your eyes are going to travel, because I mean, when you when you're looking on a page, you're looking for content. If you're throwing an extra ad in there, where the content usually is, you're going to see that ad, just like the way and Twitter does it. Same with, I was going to say, Twitter is now doing that. It, as well. Exactly, and I think that's an effective use of space. And it, if it's done delicately and it's done effectively with with ads that are relevant. People don't mind that kind of stuff, but if if you're just like throwing it, like if I'm getting ads for Barbie dolls or something, that's just like something that I don't have any interest in. I don't have any kids that have interest in. I, you know, like I just, I mean, that would that would piss me off. But if if I'm scrolling through a timeline and I see an ad for a Fiat 500, you know, I'm I'm perfectly fine with that. I might even click on the thing if it's a compelling ad. Yeah. Um, well, I want to, to, to let everyone know these stats. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. The industry average for the click-through rate on an, a on an advertisement on any social network um, is basically 0.1%, which is kind of low But -ish. But I know Google, they outperform the average of the industry. Yeah. So the, the, the Google average is 0.4%. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's really awesome. Um, Facebook's is point zero five one. That doesn't surprise me. It really doesn't because I, I, we're we're so used to the Facebook layout and the ads. Although they're tailored to us, I think <laughs> I bet you fifty percent of those clicks are just misclicks. You know, like I don't, I don't see very many yeah. people clicking on it. The well, only just... time I've seen normal people click on the ad is when it's those T-shirt sites that say, say like funny things on T-shirts. Really? That was the only time I saw somebody in the wild click on a Facebook ad, and I look for this stuff. I'm that's, looking. That's like crazy. I, I, I thought it was weird. <laughs> like I thought it was weird that I wasn't clicking on them because they're so good. So then I started clicking on them. So you felt like you had to, like. Um, yeah. I don't know. I just. Um, I try not. Uh, I mean. I spent four years studying advertising and a lot of the psychology that goes behind it and, and what advertisers do to entice you without you even realizing that they're doing it. And um, so there's a lot of stuff I don't do. And that's why when I when I give a shout out to something like I, I legitimately mean it um, because I usually only go by word of mouth um, yeah, kind of stuff, which is why a lot of times... Um, it's, as much as I hate to admit it, but I'm usually like a couple steps behind early adapters because I don't see some like awesome commercial on TV or some article on Mashable that was obviously written by this other company's PR team and then yeah. sent out to have it posted all over the place. And uh, I don't, I wait until, you know, the reviews become mainstream and all that kind of junk. Um, so when I clicked on it, I thought I was, you know, thought I was being special. <laughs> you're, you are being but special. Really, you're I'm one of point... one of them suckers now. No, you're not a sucker. You're one of the point zero zero four percent or whatever. That you are, you're part of the minority that clicks the ads. Yeah. I didn't I just... actually think it was going to be that low. I thought it was going to be closer to one percent, to be honest. Yeah, and and it's, that's just. That is kind of mind-blowing mind to think, like, there are companies that 
live and die by these ads, and, mm-hmm. the, like, you really would have to dump a substantial amount. But the thing is, you have to... There, there's different ways of advertising. Like, the giant Coke can that's out in Times Square, mm-hmm. like, that probably costs, like, $3 million a day just to have there. Probably. You know? And, and you know, what kind of return on investment is Coca-Cola seeing on that? I mean, it's all about location and, and what sells in that medium so i mean the giant coke bottle maybe all those stores surrounding it have now been bought out to only sell coke products during that period of time so now they're selling a whole lot of coke in those areas <laughs> um and those are the things that that you a lot of people don't realize happens but if they're going to do a huge gorilla marketing well then they go to all these mom and pop shops within you know, a mile radius, and hey, you can only sell Coke for the next four months, and we're going to pay you extra to do so. Yep. And uh, so it's just, and a lot of what people are saying about this GM pulling out is that people don't shop for cars on Facebook. People don't shop for anything on Facebook. No, that, that's true. Uh, Facebook sells lifestyles. So um, Facebook doesn't sell anything. No, it, well, it, it sells lifestyles, so... Um, well, well, define that for me. I don't know what you mean by that. So, your lifestyles build through basically what you see other people doing, and and you you tar- start tailoring the kinds of people you're friends with and the kind of people you interact with, and then so the more people. Okay, so let's take a step back. So Facebook's timeline or um, newsfeed, I mean, works um, by. If I am visiting the person's Facebook page often, if I am talking to the person um, a lot, um, as long as I'm having a lot of interaction with them, their stuff will show up on my feed. If I'm friends with someone and I haven't talked to them on there in two years, I might see one out of every 12 of their statuses. So Facebook has started to figure out which people your personality matches with. Mm -hmm. So then they go in and they figure... um, so you and I have a lot of interactions. So Facebook thinks that um, we have similar personalities. Mm-hmm. So when they see you're looking at, I don't know, new pink colored pencils. Um, <laughs> Is that an ad you have on Facebook? You could have just went on Facebook and found something. No, okay, so you're looking at the newest coach purse. Okay, I- I'm looking at the newest coach purse. Let's okay. be a little more realistic. Okay, okay. Um, and they're going to see that... You kind of like some designer stuff, but you've never really looked at Coach before. So now they're going to be like, well, they have similar lifestyles, so let's try this out on him. And they're going to send you the Coach um, advertisement. So they're building lifestyles around people. So now you're going to see that, well, Coach is something I should probably like because I know that these ads are tailored to me. So then you're going to start investigating why this was brought to your attention, and then your personality and, starts to change about the way you think about things. Yeah. It's kind of, it's really in-depth. It's more subconscious, though. Like, you're not going to, you're no, not going to... and these are things you're going to think about, but yeah. this is what's happening with Facebook. And you know what? I could see, I could see where I, their, their algorithm is playing a part. Like, I am not into comic books at all, but mm. a lot of the people that listen to Just Cool Enough or I've interacted with in the past are totally into comic books. And I get a lot of, like, um, comic book stuff on my, my thing. I, it's not relevant to me, but I and I always do press the report this ad is not relevant because I want my ad experience to be awesome. <laughs> like, you know, like that. that's... But they still are selling that personality to you, which is why it keeps popping back up. I know. I can't... Uh, <laughs> I so can't they want stop you to be it. more like the people that you're talking to. So they build their so demographic. Being fed your ads. Yep. Well, let's see if we get to. I'm going to like a couple car things and see if some more car stuff pops up in your. So, the weird thing is, is that um, I honestly don't think I ever go to the Coach website. However, I do get a lot of ads for it. Um, but my best friend works at Coach and is a incredibly avid Coach shopper. And, and I think that's where those ads are coming in. Um, I mean, I only own one coach person. I bought it when I work there as well. Um, but I never really went on their website. So I think they know that her and I talk a lot on Facebook. And we both... Um, so, what, but both then, so, like, something like... 
th this just isn't effective, though. That's what G GM, it came down to GM saying, this isn't effective, this is, our, our money isn't being spent well right here, why mm -hmm. are we going to buy these ads on the side? I side with them. That makes sense to me because I don't think they're going to get any more brand loyalty or any more popularity. Like, I, I really don't think that somebody's going to click a Facebook ad for a Ford Fusion Hybrid, which is on my page right now. And I just, I liked it, but I'm not going to go buy the Ford Fusion because that is on my Facebook feed. It's just, I mean, you need to have a page, but I don't think the advertising is going to be... I, I just I, I think you your company reaches a certain point where it doesn't need that kind of a kind of low brow. I think it's low brow. I think it is the slum of the internet. Be these banner ads. I really yeah. do. I th I think you need to have tactful placed ads in places where people respect them. And I, I feel like a company like GM or any major company that's traded <laughs> or or even not you know like uh, uh, any major company should pay the extra dollar or whatever it is to get into the news feed of uh, and, and say you know like joe we see you like this why not check this out um the chevy sonics is awesome you know like something like that um you got to tell us what you think though uh, social media meltdown at just cool enough dot com is uh, our email address what? Yes, and, and I heard from a little bird that you had a really awesome plug for this week. So I want to make sure you have enough time. To oh, do yeah, that. yeah, yeah. We are. We're running pretty low on time here. Let me. Uh, my plug for this week is actually another mobile thing. I know we did a mobile one last week. But um, if you haven't tried it out in a while, try it out now. It's the Opera Mini browser, not the Opera Mobile browser. There's two in your app store if you're Android. I don't know if it's out for iOS. I imagine it is. But um, Opera Mini actually is the snappiest little browser I have experienced ever, actually. I mean, like, I was using a couple of different ones, and I was trying to find the best one. And uh, the Opera Mini browser is the absolute quickest. And the reason it's the quickest is because they preload data on their server and kind of throw it all at you at once, and it renders it pretty quick. So it can make your... Uh, even 4G, do you got it? Got it. There you go. That's what you want. Um, it could make it could make your your phone. I mean, like I was just doing comparison tests and timing uh, after clearing the cache, and the Opera browser was really outperforming the the Dolphin browser and just the normal browser. So oh, check it out. It's faster. It is. It is a lot faster, and it's because they they preload the content on the Opera server and they shoot it over to you really quick, rather than going all the way over to a website. All the way back, all the way over, all the way it back. It says um, Opera's powerful servers compress data by up to ninety percent before downloading. So it, yeah, they so they they offload processing power, um, and they t they take care of it and send it your way. It's really nice. It's really cool. It's very snappy, and it's actually the interface on it's pretty nice too. I I haven't had any sort of weird rendering. It renders everything really nice. And um, I think that's going to be my new main browser on my phone. I was very impressed by it, so I wanted to pass it along. Do you think that um, the, that technology is something that we're going to see more in the future? Absolutely, yes. Uh, I mean, the, the the future the future is now. The future <laughs> of of mobile browsing. I mean, we're I I think we're reaching kind of like a. a point with hard drives where we're not going to be seeing giant, you know, once we start hitting two, three terabytes of space, we really don't need that kind of space. An average user really doesn't use that much space. And especially now, now that we've been offloading all this, uh, uh, I can't even tell you how much space. Yeah, I, I mean, like now that everything's kind of going like iCloud and, mm -hmm. and SoundCloud and this and that and Google Drive and SkyDrive, Microsoft SkyDrive and G Drive, there's just no Dropbox. reason. Dropbox especially, yeah. Like, there's, I, I can't see hardware really stacking on this kind of um, the, this kind of giant storage. And the reason, it, it, and in order to make this user experience better, we're going to need to have... A, uh, I mean, th we're going to need to have services that actually compress and do some of the processing and send it to us. So I think it's really cool, really snappy. They've been doing it for years, and I remember when they released it, it was really cool. One thing I'm not going to do with this browser, though, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to check my uh, my bank account with it. They do preload it, 
on the server, and I'm sure it's secure, but I still feel like I'm going to use, I mean, I know it's an HTTPS and this and that, but I, I am going to use just a normal, I want to communicate with the bank site, kind of, you know, I don't want a third party kind of processing yeah, my bank data. and that's a, kind of a good move. So, so yeah, like, that that's kind You'll of my know, only pitch. It's just one last little worry you can take out of the equation. Exactly, so. exactly. So that, I, I, I definitely recommend it. If you're going to check your bank, do I'm it. downloading it right now. Yeah, very nice. It, it, it's snappy. You're going to love it, especially on your T-Mobile network. Um, <gasps> it's been painful lately. Has it really? I was Actually, I was I was thinking about going to T-Mobile and getting a, a Galaxy Note. Sh should I not? I mean, I mean it's not bad. T-Mobile is not... We're in the Detroit area, by the way. However, with my factory unlocked iPhone 4, I cannot use... Um, 3G or the 4G. Then you, you 4G anyway. So I'm on edge. You are gonna love this Opera browser then, because it it will make your life a lot easier. I I bet you you're gonna see at least three times the speed. Um. So you you should be. <laughs> well, I'm glad I'm glad I could help out, but definitely check it out. Opera's a good company, and while you're at it, you might as well check out the Opera browser for your actual computer. It's uh, it's a good browser too. Okay. I'm, I'm like a browser fiend. What, what browser do you use? All of them. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Currently, do you use certain ones for certain things, or you just whatever? You know, like uh, Chrome is definitely my primary primary browser, and the reason is because it syncs between all the computers and devices that I'm on, and that's mm -hmm. why I really like it. But I use Opera, I use Mozilla, I use Internet Explorer, I use Chrome. And uh, I mean, you use I, Internet Explorer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Internet Explorer Nine is actually a very nice browser. I'm kind of testing that out right now. I <gasps> like I like to know what it puts out there. I, I, can I get to my plug room? Oh, please, please plug away. It, it's it's super short. Um, and, and I'm getting ready to review it, so we can hold on one second. I just gotta look something up. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm so excited. I couldn't think of it. <laughs> um, okay, so have you heard that um, Microsoft has launched a social network? Oh, so shall. How? Yeah, it's like so. It's like so cool. What is it? It's S O C L, I think. Yeah, it's S O C L. Um, I'm getting ready to um, sadly do a review on it for my blog, Caitlin Shelby. Um, I don't even. It, I I can't wait I to see the review. It's gonna be my my right off the bat. Um, from their main page, I can't find. If, if a social network appears and no one's around to join it, then does it exist? <laughs> exactly, and it's discover their tagline: discover new topics. Um, do you like sports, cute cats, or basket weaving? So, so, whatever. How do you pronounce it? The fact it? that you can't even pronounce it isn't a good marketing tactic. If yeah. people don't know what to call it, how are they supposed to talk about it? Maybe it's just one of those backward-ass Microsoft tactics. Like, if we make it hard to say, people will talk about it. Yeah, no, it's just... Only it's, industry people will talk about it. <laughs> so, their main points for this are um, share your search. So, there's obviously some kind of social searching feature. Um, discover new interests. Um, it just has a picture of the northern lights above it, um, so I'm not sure what that means. Um, start a video party. Uh, so they basically have taken um, Google Hangouts and they okay. now put them in their social network. And um, that's basically it. So those are their three main selling points, none of which sound uh, interesting or new. Yeah. Um, none of them entice me to jump ship. At least when Google has something, they make it sound cool <laughs> for a few days until Facebook comes with something cooler. Um, but this, they look like they're late to the party. They, oh, I mean, like, they did this once and it worked with the Xbox. Microsoft got there, was late to the party, perfected it for the next generation, it worked great. And everybody keeps going back, well, they did it with the Xbox, they did it with the Xbox. Well, they didn't do it with the Zune. They're not doing it with Windows Phone. They're not going to do it with Social. They got a pretty bad track record going. I hope, I hope they do it with Windows Phone because the new Windows Phone, the Lumia 900, is an excellent piece of hardware. But anyway, we can talk I mean, for as hours. As much as I hate, I, I, I always hate on Microsoft. I just got um, Windows 7 um, in Office 2010 at work, and 
Um, I don't want to admit it out loud, but I will just quickly. Um, I kind of like it. It's uh, nice. I'm not going to say it again, but it's kind of cool. From an IT um, professional's point of view, Seven's very nice too. Like it's 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 a solid. It's like a good upgrade. If you go to XP to Seven, you're in good shape. Yeah, and in the, my machine runs better. Um, things seem to be better, and it works nicer and. Um, yeah, but I don't have high hopes for this, but, um, so you can. So, where can we see the review for this? Um, at my blog, which is www.caitlinshelby.me. Caitlin Shelby me? Yeah, because it's me. The about, you got an about me? That's your blog? No. Did you just actually do a M-E site? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a, that's a neat idea. Because it's me. Yeah, okay. I, I can, I, that's, that's pretty cool. Good it's marketing. Different. Good marketing. That's very good. It's just different. Yeah, very but, good. Um, it, I had originally start off as more of a personal blog, and then I realized my life wasn't so interesting. Um, <laughs> and so it has morphed into something new over the last six months or so. Okay, quickly, because we got to wrap it up. Um, yes or no, is Facebook stock going to go up or down in the next five months? Up or down? You're doing mainly uh, up, not much though. I don't think. Um, it, and I'm actually been contemplating whether or not I'm gonna buy some. I'm not. Uh, not gonna buy it. I'm not gonna buy it until the Google I/O conference. And the reason is, I think, I think that uh, Mark Zuckerberg is smarter than than a lot of people give him credit for. Mm -hmm. Think of this, and I'll leave you, I'm going to leave you, this is my last thing, because this is a whole other topic, but Google is not, or Google, Facebook is not even taking any advantage of the mobile market right now. If you go to your Facebook application on your phone, there is zero monetization. I think that Zuckerberg purposely is sandbagging the world by not releasing this, and is waiting for the stock to either go down or waiting for the perfect amount of time to release the uh, monetization on mobile because a lot of people use Facebook on mobile and if it's going to be done right, Facebook is going to be, I mean, they're going to make so much more money. Maybe not what they're valued at right now, but I can see it going as low as like 70. I, I don't I mean, like, well, I'm not a financial analyst, but I just do, I do think that once they monetize mobile, that stock price is going to jump up to where, uh, where it should be. Yeah. I, so, I but, agree. but I think in the next five months, unless they release that mobile, it's just going to keep dropping down. <laughs> I mean, this, and this is what I've been saying for so long is, is that, Facebook has never adapted themselves to the mobile network. Uh -huh. um, they've created these watered-down apps, but at the same time, they don't work that great. No. They actually make your, your Facebooking experience less enjoyable. But I think they do that on purpose to get you onto the site. I think so, too. They, they have to right now because that's where they make their money. Exactly. So, um, as they keep saying, this is the year of geolocation and mobile and geolocation and mobile together. But, <laughs> so we will see. We will see. And we'll see I, you guys. I love to check my Facebook and be thinking about how hungry I am, and then it gives me an ad to some local restaurant. Good. That sounds good to me. Now that's 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 where the cash is going to start flowing in. Well, geolocation for advertising. Good deal. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Email the show, social media meltdown, at justcoolenough.com. Follow me on Twitter. I'm doing fun and interesting videos. Follow her on Twitter. She's always doing cool industry news and keeping you up on her, her awesome life. And, uh... Life is kind of awesome right yeah, now. Yeah, kind of great. Kind of good. Yeah. <laughs> See you guys later. Bye.